Side Hustle Show 307. This is online arbitrage. Can you find Amazon FBA profit from the comfort of your couch? My guest today shares how he does just that and how he's on track to sell a quarter million dollars worth of stuff this year, all on the side from his day job. What's up? What's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. Online arbitrage. Buy low from one website, sell high on another, and collect the profit in between. And sometimes, as you'll hear, maybe even from the same website, it's a tantalizingly simple sounding business model and one I've been anxious to dive into and learn more about myself. The conversation today is going to center on Amazon FBA or Fulfillment by Amazon. That's the program through which Amazon crowdsources its inventory from individual sellers like you and me and which allows individual sellers like you and me to tap into Amazon's ginormous audience of buyers and world-class logistics network, meaning they're going to ship this stuff out to customers on your behalf. We've covered FBA in the past on the show, but today's guest focuses on online arbitrage to sources inventory, which appeals to me because it seems more efficient than hunting up and down the aisles of Walmart. So I'm excited to introduce Amit Desai from creditcard101.us to the show. He's a research scientist by day, but by nights and weekends, he's built a pretty serious e-commerce business on track to do $250,000 in sales this year. The funny thing is, Amit's side hustle background is actually as a travel hacker. You know, one of these guys who racks up a bunch of points and frequent flyer miles so he can go on these awesome trips for free. And it was at a travel hacking conference. Yes, apparently there is such a thing. One of the speakers there presented about his Amazon business and how he was racking up tons of credit card points simply buying inventory for his business. And that's when the light bulb went off for Amit, where if he could figure out a way to buy this stuff and just break even on it by reselling the products, he could seriously step up his travel game. He wasn't even looking to make a profit when he started. So that's how he started down this path, how he got introduced to this world. And he soon found out that he could do better than break even, that there was real profit out there, not just in the form of free flights. So stay tuned to hear Amit's favorite tools for sourcing profitable inventory, his buying criteria, and how to begin stacking different discounts and rewards to improve your margins and get a leg up on the competition. Notes and links from this episode are at sidehustlenation.com slash Amit. That's A-M-I-T. And I'll warn you, this is going to be a little like drinking from a fire hose. So I did my best to organize all the apps and resources and plugins that Amit mentions for you in the free PDF highlight reel, which you can download through the link in the episode description of your podcast player app or at that URL Again, sidehustlenation.com slash Amit. Now, online arbitrage, like every other topic we cover on the show, is a skill that's learnable through education and practice. And if you're ready to step up your skills there or in other areas of your business, I encourage you to check out our sponsor, Skillshare.com. Skillshare is the online on-demand learning community that now has more than 20,000 classes in just about every topic you can think of all taught by industry experts and insiders. Of course, I recommend you practice just-in-time learning by picking the ones that are going to make the greatest impact on your bottom line. Visit Skillshare.com slash side hustle for two months of unlimited access for just 99 cents. Once again, that deal for Side Hustle Show listeners is at Skillshare.com slash side hustle. This edition of the Side Hustle Show is also sponsored by BrandCrowd.com, a cool new service from the folks at DesignCrowd. BrandCrowd is an automated logo maker tool based on the work of thousands of professional designers. How it works is you punch in your business name or industry, and the tool will generate thousands of logo ideas for you right on the spot. Then you can use the editor to change the fonts and colors until you've got it just right. Give it a try today at BrandCrowd.com slash maker. It's totally free to get started, and once you're happy with your logo, you can buy it and just download all the files that you need. Once again, that's brandcrowd.com slash maker. Check it out and let me know what you come up with. I'll be back with my top takeaways from the call with Amit after the interview. Ready? Let's do it. That's where I got started. I was buying these Apple watches. At that time in November, Discover came up with a credit card. They still have that credit card. It's called Discover It. 
And what the credit card offers you is 3% cash back in the first year. So you know what? I just applied for the card and they had this crazy Apple promo going on. Like Apple Pay was just launched. So they said that if you use your Discover credit card with Apple Pay, we're going to give you 20% cash back. So it was limited to $4,000 a year, including the double cash back they have. So I'm like, this is great. I mean, so I started looking for deals and I went on Best Buy and I saw these Apple watches on sale. I'm like, wow, these Apple watches are being sold on Amazon for like $3.59 and I can buy it from Best Buy for $2.99. So with the fees and everything, I was barely breaking even, maybe a profit of 2 or $3. I'm like, let me try that. So I went, picked up three watches. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to lose $1,000 if nothing happens. Worst case scenario. Picked up three watches. Watches, pack them in a box, you know, open up my Amazon account, a selling account, and send them to Amazon. As soon as these watches checked in, they sold. I'm like, what? Really? I sold something. So I got I got excited. I'm like, you know what? Let me pick three more. And in the next three months, I sold almost 100 to 200 Apple watches. I earned $4,000 in cashback rewards from Discover just because I was breaking even on these watches and, you know, earning credit card points. I said, this is phenomenal. But again, when you have one return from, so I had one return from an Apple watch, so I use it for myself. But again, for most part, I got lucky, but, you know, some people could get unlucky and they have a lot of customer returns, which we either have to eat the cost or, you know, sell it as used. So just want to bring that up. So you needed to find something that had enough margin in it to pay for shipping, pay for Amazon fees, and to make it worth your while. Correct. So there's a good software. It's called RevSeller, R-E-V-Seller.com. It's a 30-day free trial, and I recommend anyone should try it. What it does, it, it links in with your Amazon seller account. So let's say you want to start selling on Amazon tomorrow. What you do is create a seller account on Amazon, make sure it's not linked to your Prime account. You cannot create a Prime account and sell on the same account. Create a different email, set it up just for trial purposes. You don't even need an EIN. You can just do it with a social security number to get started. There's people from China selling in US, just sitting there in China, they're selling here without any social security number. Do you need to set up the pro level account or is the free version okay? It's a good question. If you do not have a pro account, then Amazon will charge you $1 listing fees per item. So the cost for a pro account is only $40 a month. So let's say you're selling more than $40 a month. It's better to have a pro account because the first thing is it gives you some better benefits. You you get better capacity, then there's no limitation on how many products you can send in. But if you do not have a pro account, there's some limitation that Amazon restricts. You could still sell, but if you're just looking to sell like 15, 20, 30 products a month, test it out, you don't need to start with a pro account. Just start with a basic account, you know, get your feet wet and then kind of go to a pro account because now you're paying $40 a month, which is five, literally $500 a year to Amazon just for the pro account, not accounting for any seller fees or shipping fees or whatsoever. But yeah, that's a rev seller is a great software. So what would happen is my Amazon page looks different from anyone else's Amazon page who does not have rev seller. So let's say you pop up something like a Nike shoe on Amazon and it's selling for $80. Yeah. So this rev seller will pop up a new window, which will show you how much profit you can make. It includes all kinds of Amazon fees, not including shipping. Like there's two Amazon fees. One is called an Amazon referral fees and there's an Amazon commission. So you pay for both these costs, which are inbuilt in this software. So let's say your buy cost of this uh, was $40 and it's selling on Amazon for $89. I usually assume 30% fees because that's the worst case scenario. So for like a $90 shoe I'm buying for $40, I'm going to pay like $25 in fees. So I literally make like $15 or $20 profit, not including like long term storage fees, which is 50 cents for every product which has been stored in Amazon for 365 days. But that's a good indication. So when I'm doing online arbitrage, you know, one of the criteria I have is I have, there's two things, you know, to understand. One is called your return on investment and the other is profit or your margin. And a lot of people get confused like, wow, I'm, like, I'm, I'm making a hundred dollar profit on this product. It looks good, but your, your margin or your ROI ROI is basically a return of investment in how much percent you're making back. And so understand that before you start selling on Amazon. Of course, you know, I tell people, get dirty, you know, sell five products and see what you learn about it. Don't go for hundreds of products. That's the mistake I made is like, my risk tolerance is a little bit higher than most people. And when I get excited, I just get excited. So that was a, <laughs> that was a wrong, wrong thing to do. So if I had to look back three years ago, I would be like, let me try with five products. How do they do? Which one does better? What I've seen is groceries are awesome. Products in grocery, like let's say you like something, you like nuts. Why don't you think about selling those nuts? Go to Google, 
look up wholesalers for nuts and give them a call. Like, hey, I want to buy 100 units of your, your almonds. How much can you sell it me for? Because Amazon has everything on it, literally everything that you can think of. So if you personally like a product, why not start with that product and start selling it on Amazon? That's interesting. I would never think to buy groceries, or at least not yet. I wouldn't think to buy groceries on Amazon. I'm sure that will change as they continue their path towards world domination with Whole Foods and everything. Yeah, with the Whole Foods, if you install the app right now, they're giving you $10 off your first order. And if you have Prime account, if you do a delay in your shipment, like if you go for the basic shipping, they're giving you $5 pantry credit. So yeah, they're really ramping up. Yeah, well, take a step back for a minute and tell me what the ROI and profit margin that you're looking for on these flips. For me, I usually look for a profit and any product, at least $20. That was my number because that's just my return of investment. But with that said, if I find a product that is moving very fast, uh, like what does move, what moves very fast is like products that are used on a daily basis, like groceries. You know, people eat food every day, but they don't wear, they don't have to buy shoes every day. They buy shoes once every six months, a few times a year. Not that I don't sell shoes. I sold over 1,000 pairs of shoes this year. So they are, they are good profit margin. Some of the good places to look for shoes are Nike, uh, Nike outlet stores. You go to a Nike outlet store and they have this friends and family sale every few months. You can buy discounted Nike gift cards for $85 very frequently. So right off the bat, you're making a 15% profit because of the discounted gift card, not even including what, what sale you're going to get on the shoes. So sometimes I'll go to a Nike store and I'm walking out with $3,000 or $5,000 worth of shoes and the guy's going, how many shoes are you going to wear? But these shoes move so fast. So my, my, my criteria is that I look for at least $20 if I'm selling something like a shoe because that kind of accumulates, you know, in back of my mind, like, yeah, it's going to take an account, like my long-term storage fees, it's going to take an account, uh, my shipping fees. So my net profit will be at least $15 on a pair, but usually it's much higher. You know, that's the worst case scenario. So if you look for a number, that's what I look for. And for profit, it varies again. You know, I've sold groceries where I only make $2 profit, but I'm selling 100 units a month, guaranteed. Shoes, not so much guaranteed because, of course, it varies from people's choices and whatnot. Well, yeah, you got to pick the right size, all sorts of different variables there. Correct. And then the percentage piece, what's the ROI percentage that you're targeting? I usually look between 20 to 30%. I've gone as low as 5%, you know, occasionally. But what I see is that a fast-moving product. What are the chances of the... So you have to spend a little bit of time analyzing a deal. You know, it's like being a business person. So you have to have some good softwares that, that could help you do that. As I said, RevSeller is a good software to do that. Another good extension that I use is called How Many. You know, it's a How Many extension. You can look it up. It's a Chrome extension. What it basically tells you is how many units of this product are being sold every month. On Amazon. So that helps me make a decision like, okay, I'll, I'll go for a profit percent of 5%. That's okay with me if I can sell 500 units of this product guaranteed based on number of sellers that are there. Because that's a great extension. It'll tell you how many sellers are selling the product and how many units are being sold. So you can do a math and then decide, is it a good deal or a bad deal? Okay, interesting. Do you, have you ever come across a number that's like, you thought it was a good deal and you say, oh, that's not moving nearly fast enough for, for me to invest? Yeah, it happens. So what happens is a lot of times products are seasonal. Now we are coming in the winter month, so this is a bad time to sell shorts. But this is a good time to pick up shorts that are on sale because that's how it works. So I've picked up products, I've picked up shoes thinking that they would sell and they're just sitting on Amazon right now with a lot of fees on them. The chart showed pretty good. Another chart or a free tool that I use is called Keepa. It's K double E P. It's free. You could install that on your Amazon page and it tells you how many, when is the price dropping on this product? It shows you the history of the product in the last five years, six years, seven years. So again, a very simple tool to help you do analysis on your deal that, you know, is it a good deal? But yeah, with that said, yeah, I've, I've gone wrong more than once. Like, yeah, this is going to sell. But what I've seen is I'm getting more success with stuff like grocery. I'm getting more success with like beauty products because they sell all year long compared to shoes, shoes and other items that are, that are pretty seasonal. Like right now is a great time to sell candies, you know, but not, not February or March, but yeah, maybe April because it's going to be Easter. So you have to see what sells. I have friends who only sell candies on Amazon, only sell candies, millions of dollars of candies. But wow. you have to, yeah, it's, it's crazy. This month itself, they'll do like a million dollars in candies. 
But again, you have to become good at connecting. <laughs> that's, that's nuts. It is nuts. And so going back to the Keepa tool, if you see a price history that's just continually getting beaten down, that's a red flag? Or what are you looking for on that? Not necessary. So that's a great question. So I'm actually going to fast forward a little bit because I do a lot of Amazon to Amazon flips. This year, I'll probably do close to $100,000 just on Amazon flips. And what are Amazon flips? When you look at a keeper chart on Amazon, basically, this is NFL season, right? Come March or April, once the Super Bowl is over, it's like all NFL stuff is going to go on sale. So you'll start to see these prices on Amazon dropping sharply. And these are not three-party sellers. Now, Amazon sells itself on Amazon. The way Amazon is structured today is almost, they're only selling 40%, which is Amazon product. 60% is sold by people like me who are third-party sellers. So we actually make up larger volume of selling on Amazon compared to what Amazon is doing today. It's all algorithms. So what Amazon is trying to do is if they want to clear up their NFL stuff, they'll start dropping the price because they want to clear their shelves themselves. So I'll be picking up an NFL shoes or NFL whatever thing, a jacket for great sale price because the price of the chart is going down, 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 down. And maybe an $80 product is now 25 but it's going to go back to 80 in the next three or four months. So of course, it's a little bit pain for you to store in your garage or you know whatever it is. For me, I use a pack and ship center in a tax-free state in Salem, New Hampshire. So everything they do for me, I mean, I'm at a point right now that I only spend about 10 to 15 hours a month on my Amazon business. 80% of my business is almost automated. My goal is to get to like 90 or 100%, you know, just kind of play a leadership role. I work with some virtual assistants and I have some buyers that I work with. Of course, they, that take away my profit. But again, this is an, this will be a hustle where I'm investing the least amount of time and still making money out of it. So that, that's the end goal. Yeah, we are touching on a lot of different things here. So I'm trying to figure out how best to slow it down and, and give people a guide to get started. And that's an interesting place to start is like looking at different products with changes in seasonality and saying, okay, Amazon says, hey, it's not worth it for us to store this for the next several months, but it might be for you. That's one way to source inventory. Where else are you getting these products from? So I do almost 80, 70% online. So just like Amazon, there's other websites. Walmart, actually Walmart is one of my good source to buy products from. Their products are usually much more cheaper than Amazon. They just don't have a good ordering system like Amazon. They do have a two-day shipping, but again, their, their delivery system is nowhere close to Amazon. So they have a lot of sales where you can pick up products from. Other websites that I usually go to are the Google Express, which is a collection of a lot of stores. It can tell you the best pricing. And I also have an extension on my Chrome, which is called Wikibuy. It's a great extension if you don't have it, W-I-K-I buy. So what happens is every time you're looking at a product, this will automatically tell you the lowest price on a product and at what which website. It's free software. So it takes the thinking out of you. Like, But if you see a product which is selling for $50 and another website is selling for $45, it's not really worth getting into it. But yeah, you, you look at a product selling for $50 and the Wikibuy says, oh, Staples is having the same product for $25. So obviously I'm going to go to Staples staples, pick up that product and then send it to Amazon, hopefully to sell it for $50. And other websites that I use are Costco is a good place to shop but because of the 2% executive rewards. You know, you make those rewards at 2% if you're an executive member with Costco. They add up along with your credit card rewards. Barnes & Nobles, they usually have some great sales. Most people don't even Barnes & Noble, they just think it's like books, but it's more than books. They have a lot of toys. And toys are, you know, not really seasonal. Toys sell all year long. Of course, Toys R Us are out of business, but that was one of my great places to shop for discounted toys because there were so many gift cards and whatnot. So it's different places to shop for discounted deals. Best Buy is another good place for electronics like laptops. They're usually on sale like this week. Best Buy is having a sale on Apple iPad Mini. On Amazon, they're selling for $3.99 and Apple iPad Mini are on sale for $2.99 at Best Buy. So if you, you could just go so and... that's enough margin, that's enough gap in there for you to say, okay, that's worthwhile. Oh yeah, it's like $100 gap. So that'll easily cover your fees and shipping. And usually these things are light. So it's not, it doesn't cost that much to ship them. You know, I would assume the total fees and shipping would be $30 a unit. So you could literally make a profit of 50 to $60 at the minimum by selling these. But if you're ballparking a 30% 
you know, Amazon fee at the high end, that's over $100 in fees on a, on a $400 product. Yeah, it all varies. I mean, I keep it that the worst case scenario, but when you look it up on RevSeller, it would not be that high. It's anywhere from 10 to 30% if you look at it. I just keep 30% as a worst case scenario. But I know for a fact, like uh, on electronics or some of these products, the fees are, and fees is not fixed. It varies from a product to product. Some products have higher fees, some products have lower fees. RevSeller is, again, a great tool. that That's what I use on a daily basis just to see. You know, it takes the thinking away. Another great tool to use is an Amazon seller app. It's free. Just install the app. You scan a product. Just just scan the SKU, and it'll tell you what your profit could be. Sure. So this is more when, when you're out in the store, like when you're at the Nike outlet store, you can kind of see what issues might be going for on Amazon. Correct. Yeah, I dabbled a little bit in the clearance arbitrage stuff a couple of years ago. And that was the Amazon seller app was what I was using just to prove to myself that it could happen because it did make a lot of sense to me, but I was surprised and, and pleasantly surprised and ended up making some profit from that, but not nearly the volume that it sounds like you, you and your peers in different Amazon seller groups are getting done. The problem for me was the needle in the haystack nature of it. Like, okay, I'm spending time, I'm driving to Walmart, I'm looking at the clearance aisle shelves, And it just, sometimes I would leave empty handed and it was just like, well, that was a waste of 45 minutes. And so for your, you say, okay, I'm spending 10 to 15 hours a week fueling this business. Is that primarily hunting for inventory? Yeah, I've actually scaled down to 10 to 15 hours a month now. I used to do 10 to 15 hours. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I mostly look for deals, but now I have virtual assistant who are actually doing their shopping for me. So I've told them that my criteria, like, hey, I want minimum $10 profit or $15 profit. This is my criteria. And I'm part of an Amazon to Amazon flip group. This is a good Facebook page. It's called FBA Sourcing Simplifiers. They run a flip group where they find about 200 deals for you every month, which are, as I explained, you are Amazon to Amazon flips. So for me, again, paying $150 a month is totally worth it to find you know 200 deals. It's less than a dollar a deal that I'm paying for. But I don't buy all the deals. I just look for the good ones. You know, I've gotten a little less on shoes because shoes take longer to sell. I'm more into like groceries and you know home goods and other stuff, which which kind of move faster. Can a new seller account sell groceries, or is that something you had to get ungated in? Since recently, Amazon has put a lot of restrictions on new sellers. This happened because of all the fake products being sold from China. They were like fake Nike shoes and people were getting banned left, right and center. So if you're a new seller, it could be a little bit challenging for you, but it, I'm not saying it's impossible. What Amazon is going to ask you for invoices to prove that you you picked up this product not by, you know, just from a grocery store, uh, like you went to a Kroger and you saw 20 things on sale. They're not going to take a receipt as a proof. But you have to go to an actual wholesaler of groceries. You can Google it up. There's few. Allen Brothers is one of them. They issue invoices and Amazon accepts Allen Brothers as one of the approved vendors. So you can pick up some. And so for some things, you could be auto approved. So it all changes. Like I was able to sell Adidas, but now I'm not able to sell Adidas. And so it's just random restrictions. I was not able to sell Nike, but now I'm able to sell Nike. So I don't know what kind of algorithms Amazon has, but it keeps changing. But with that said, yeah, if you're new, it could be challenging in the first, a little bit frustrating, like, wow, I can't sell groceries. But the the solution is Amazon is going to ask you for an invoice. They just want to make sure that you're real and you really want to do business. So you could order like 40, 50 candies, you know, set of candies that you think if Amazon won't approve you, at least you can eat it yourself. So that's that's the first step to do it. And we should add to that. There are always going to be hoops to jump through in any business that you're starting. And this kind of separates the people who are serious about it from the people who want. Like, if you're willing to put in the time to figure out how to get past that hurdle, there's greener pastures for you on the other side. So, yeah, there's going to be challenges. And that's always going to be a part of the game, no matter what business that you're in. The interesting thing is with this business is you're not creating these listings. You're just, hey, I'm going to send in this product and I'm going to add it to the existing listing on Amazon. And so when people are searching for whatever product that is, like they'll have the option to buy mine or probably a dozen other sellers. Correct. Do you find like with the FBA sourcing simplifiers group, I think that was a group that was mentioned a couple of years ago from Asad Siddiqui as well, where we've got all these people in this Facebook group that we all sent about the same deals. Now this product that was selling for $100 is now selling for 50 because everybody like beats down the price or is there an unspoken understanding not to create a bloodbath price war? 
Yeah, so that's the challenge is people are doing race to the bottom because one thing what happens is people get in the business not knowing their liabilities. Like, wow, this is the last thousand dollars I had and now I want my money back. This thing is not selling. Let me just sell it quickly and get my money back. But what they do in the meanwhile is they're hurting other people who are trying to really make profit out of it and treat it like a business. So I usually tell people is do not get into Amazon, you know, if you do not have a, a play money or risk money to start with, don't get in debt. That's what I did is I had some play money of a couple thousand dollars that I wanted to start with and see how it goes. Because you're, you'll be racing to the bottom because you'll be frustrated. Like my product is not selling. Rev seller told me this sells thousand units. Now, again, these are software. These are not people, you know, people go wrong and softwares go wrong. But you can, you can still understand a deal and, you know, looking at some charts, you can do an analysis yourself see what's a good deal and what's a bad deal. For me personally, as I said, beauty products are great. They move pretty fast. Groceries are good. And I've sold a lot, I've sold a lot of laptops. I, I love selling electronics too. They're lightweight and there's not too much uh, margin on it, but the profit is is decent. Like the number looks good. You're hoping that it doesn't return, you know, then uh, you'll have a lot of laptops sitting in the home, but that's the risk that you take. So let's talk about that for a second. What happens when somebody does return that. They say this was defective or I just didn't want it anymore. And Amazon is always going to err on the side of the customer. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great point. So Amazon, most of the time is always on the side of the customer, which is good for you if you are if you're buying from Amazon. That's really come handy to me. But now I'm on the, I'm on the receiving side. So what happens is, let's say you sold a shoe and after 25 days, the customer, customer gets 30 days and sometimes more than 30 days to return the product, which is frustrating because now your money's stuck. So as soon as they initiate a return, the money will be debited from your account, even if the customer has not returned the product. So you're, you're already negative. And after that, customer has 30 days to return the product. The product comes back to the Amazon warehouse. Amazon does an inspection of it. If they feel that product has been used, they're just going to send it back to you. You have to, you have to eat it. But if the Amazon looks at it like, hey, no one has ever touched the product, they'll put it back on the shelf and it's again available for sale on your inventory. So I've happened a few times, like I had shoes that are returned to me. They were never worn. Amazon just decided that somebody looked at it and like, oh, somebody wore it. Let me send it back to Amit. They show up on my doorstep. I have to pack it again, send it back to Amazon, the exact same shoes. So that's a little bit frustrating is, uh, you know. So in that case, you just send it right, you send it straight back in and be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, literally, I sent it back and I had like 15, 20 pairs, which popped up a couple of months ago. In the last two months, most of them were not worn, only two or three, which I donated to Goodwill. And the remaining, I just sent it back to Amazon because they're brand new. It's people looking at it and they, they find something about it and which say, oh, it's, it's worn now. It's, it's, it's used shoes, so we cannot sell it. So let's pretend I'm your virtual assistant and you're training me to do this online arbitrage shopping. And so you've given me this list of websites that I should go check. I should check Walmart and Barnes and Noble and Best Buy and, and all this stuff. And even Amazon itself is it does like, okay, go to the sales section of their website. And then you, you're using these different apps and extensions and resources to figure out this is my sourcing criteria if it checks these boxes, like click buy, here's my credit card. Yeah, so I do have authorized users. They're allowed to use my credit card. But I usually look at the deal before they really buy it. You know, before they click, I, I go through it myself just to make sure there is no mistake. And, and they're pretty good now because I've been working with them for about seven or eight months. But again, I use one more software, which I didn't mention. It's called Tactical Arbitrage. It's a great software. There was a software called OA X-Ray. It is still around. That's the first software I used to scout deals. But now I've switched to tactical arbitrage. It's about eighty to hundred dollars a month, and great software. You know, if you look up the Facebook page, the owner of this company is from Australia. Great guy, Alex Moss. I met him many times at conferences, and he's very, very helpful. And they're really revamping the software big time. So anyone could literally just get in the software for a thirty-day trial. You know, play around with it, and you can start finding some profitable deal because the software just does the job for you. What I was saying, talking about ROI and profit, and they scout hundreds of websites. Website, just not one. So what my VA does is I have 10 or 15 websites that I really like based on my choice and they just scout those websites, not hundreds of websites. And based on that, you know, you put in your filters, whatever you want, like what ROI you're looking for, what profit margin you're looking for, and the deals will just pop up. Now, the bad thing is the same deals are going to pop up for other people who are using the softwares. But again, that's the risk that you take and I'm okay with it because, you know, I look at the analysis and now being in Amazon for a few years, I, you know, yeah, that's fine. This product is going to sell. You, you're right. Seven out of 10 times, you know, you're going to fail a few times, which is okay. Because of that, are you hesitant to go, say you find a screaming deal on their 
But knowing that other people are using the same software, the same tools, the same criteria, you're like, well, I'm not going to go 20 grand deep into this product because the bottom might fall out of this market if everyone is doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I would never go 20 grand on a product unless it's candies in Halloween season, you know, if you really have a good deal. <laughs> yeah, it's like you have to diversify your risk. I, ha- I today have about 700 or 800 active SKUs on Amazon. Some people I know have about 2,000 or 3,000. And it, it, it gets a little bit painful to maintain all these SKUs and, you know, kind of, because sometimes the deals are like one time. You, have to, you know, you can't find the deal again. Like, okay, I got it this time, but what about next time? So you're always looking for new deals, which is the most challenging part of selling on Amazon. But with that said, if you're doing wholesale, you could have the same product. Like right now, I'm selling some knives on Amazon. I'm only selling like 20 units a month. I'm okay with it. But I know these units have been selling for a year now. And come Christmas, I'm going to sell about 40 or 50 of these knives. And I'll tell you the story how I found it because... I bought these set of knives from a website, I think it was uh, Bed Bath & Beyond or something like that. And I'm like, you know what, This these are good knives. Let me just send an email to the manufacturer. Are they going to let me sell? Guess what? They said yes. Like, yeah, we'll, and I'm like, really? You're going to give me that price? Like, yeah, we'll give you that price. Most people don't even make an effort to call up the uh, manufacturer themselves. They're assuming that they're going to be denied, which is not true. Most people are looking for partnerships. So I send an email and it worked out for me. And I sell about 20, 25 units of these knives every month. So I don't have to look for new SKUs. I could just be selling these knives and find 10 or 20 products like that. But it's, that's the challenge, finding products like that. You just have to be out there at conferences or, you know, scouting yourselves to find such things. This is fascinating stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm already like opening up different tabs and be like, okay, I could do <laughs> one advantage that I think you have is the, the knowledge of discount stacking or just having your ear to the ground on the different deals that are out there that are adding margin to your flips that maybe other people aren't seeing with certain gift card deals and the credit card cash back bonuses. Like you mentioned at the very beginning, the Apple Watch Discover card, Apple Pay stacking scenario. And to Amit's credit, there's a, there's a ton of resources on this in his Facebook group, Credit Card 101. So if you're not a member, definitely encourage you to check that out. Is there a central resource that you go to find out about you know these types of things? Or is this just like a practice of of doing it? This is what I would recommend if somebody is serious on selling on Amazon. Go to Facebook. That's the best source right now. You know, there's real people who are selling and making money. And most of them, most of the time you'll find they're helpful. Just type in FBA. You know, when you go to Amazon, type in FBA. Subscribe to as many pages as you like. I have a couple of favorites. I like FBA sourcing simplifiers. I like FBA today. Then there's some wholesale groups as well, but there are a lot of private groups. And the idea is that when you join this group, you have to try to become in the inner circle of these guys. That's where the real meat is. And this is a new kind of a social skill that's evolving, which is called how to be Facebook friendly, you know, <laughs> which I'm learning myself is you're connecting with these people you've never met. And just based on your conversations, they're going to tell you some secret. So that's happening a lot. Like people are forming these smaller groups with 20, 30 people who, you know, once you're on these Facebook groups, that's where all the interaction happens to find good deals and knowing the secret sources. But for me, like when discount stacking, one website that I usually go to is cashbackmonitor.com. It basically tells you what percent you're getting from each website. And it, it gets updated every every day or you know, every few hours as soon as the deals pop up. So that's a great place to start. It's called Cashback Monitor. And then you look for discounted gift cards. You know, I personally sell a lot of discounted gift cards, like because I, I have a community of people that I work with. I have about in my coaching group and we all do crowdsourcing. It's pretty cool. So we are buying these discounted gift cards that are like fifteen or twenty percent off. And then I'm selling these gift cards to other people better than rates that they can get from Raise or Gift Card Wiki or, you know, any other websites because now the fees is gone. You know, we're not paying any commissions to the Raise or whatever. So they get better rates. We get a little bit more profit and all of us are earning credit card points. Then I use a lot of apps. You know, some of the good apps you can use for double dipping or triple dipping is called Dosh, D-O-S-H, Ibota. Drop, you know, these are some easy apps to make money. I mean, from everyday shopping, even if you're not selling on Amazon. I mentioned Wikibuy. That's one of the things that I use as an extension on my browser to get good deals and discount stacking. It'll tell you things like that. And one of the least used apps that is called United MPX app. If you don't have it today, get this app. What it is, they have both for iOS and Android. You're basically earning United Miles on the spot 
for buying gift cards. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you need to buy a return ticket for 24,500 miles and you're 500 miles short. You could actually go on the United app and buy a gift card. Some some gift cards give you one mile a dollar, some give you five mile a dollar, some give you 10 miles different. But let's say you buy a Best Buy gift card for 500. You know for a fact that you'll be shopping at Best Buy. They give you 500 miles on the spot which gets added to your United account on the spot. So I use that app a lot to buy gift cards. And the gift app, which is GYFT, is another great app to shop if you have a right credit card. If you have a credit card called Ink Cash Business, every time you check out by the gift app, you earn five ultimate reward points, which are basically a chase currency. So it's a great way to earn five points a dollar on buying your gift cards. And you know they have Lowe's gift cards on sale or any other gift cards. And gift cards are a great place to, discounted gift cards really add up your profit because now you know, you're literally getting something that you're not even bought at 15% off to start with. So that gives you a lot more leg room to take some risky deals. You know, like, am I going to make money? Am I going to lose money? But hey, are you starting with a 10 or 15 or 20% profit? So you don't have to worry that much. Okay, so this is an interesting angle. So if you can get the gift card for a certain store discounted to begin with, all of a sudden you're spending 80 cents on the dollar to acquire these items. And then you can get that item on sale because you know you're buying it with the gift card at the store and then turn it around and, and reselling it. Absolutely. Nike is a great example. Like they have these friends and family sale where things are like 20, 30% discount. Then you use the discounted gift card. So now you're literally looking at 30% without even selling a product, which is awesome. And Nike shoes sell very fast. If somebody wants to sell shoes, I'd say pick up Nike or Skechers because they sell very fast. It's one of the fastest selling brands on Amazon. Okay, interesting. Do you have to get special approval to sell Nikes? Depends. I was not approved. And one day I opened up my account, I was approved. So it's some crazy Amazon algorithm that you need, but it's different for different buyers. But again, I do not have too much experience in starting an Amazon business today. It's all my experience from the last three years. So, But if you're starting off today, they, it's a little challenging, but but again, Amazon is not the only place to sell. You know, there's places like eBay. There's places like local, you know, you could flip locally. I would say people look at Amazon and like, I'm going to make 2000 profit. I'm like, no, start local. I sell my products, which are returned from Amazon on some places like Mercery, uh, Craigslist, eBay. You can sell products there. Amazon is not the only place. And these places have lower fees. Craigslist has no fees. Of course, you are now required to send the product and meet somebody that you don't know. But there's places that you can sell outside of Amazon and make money. Right. If you can get into the deal for a low enough price, you'll, you'll find a way to unload it and, and at least break even on it. Yeah, I have a funny story. So, you know, there was this <laughs> printer which were selling on Walmart for $30. And this person, and I listed them on Craigslist. Let me just put them on Craigslist, see what happens. People were willing to pay me $60 for that printer. I'm like, okay, meet me at the Walmart. So I would literally go to the Walmart like 10 minutes before the guy would show up. I will go inside the Walmart, pick up, pay $30 for that printer, come outside and meet him and give them the laptop for 60 bucks. <laughs> so I, I probably saw like six or seven printers like that. So this is a good website. If you want to do like local flipping, there's a website called BrickSeek, B-R-I-C-K, seek.com. What it tells you is in stock products, which are on sale, on stores like Walmart and Target and a couple other stores. They're not always perfect in their stock because sometimes the Walmart employees want to keep the product to themselves. But it, it's a good place to start. You could pick up some tablets really cheap when they go on sale. And it works the same way with the algorithm we are talking about, like the Keepa charts. The Brixic has the same algorithm, like Amazon is, you know, Walmart and Targets are trying to clear up their shelf. So they do a deep, deep pricing on these things that you can pick up or really cheap. I've usually seen TVs like, you know, 65-inch TVs for like 200 bucks sometimes at a local store. So BrickSeek has a both a uh, free version that you can subscribe to. And also they have a premier version where you pay like $10 a month or $20 a month where they give you deals that are local to you. So you can play with both of them to get some good local deals. Okay, interesting. This is where you combine the discounted gift cards with the local deals that you can flip them locally yeah, while you're waiting for your Amazon account to get ungated or get approved or something. Yeah, exactly. You've given us a ton of stuff to <laughs> digest, a ton of different tools to explore and research. So I mean, thank you so much for, for just laying this all on us. I mean, I've got ideas spinning in my head and 
And it's impressive how you, okay, now I've got my, this is my sourcing criteria. I hired a virtual assistant to do it. I've got my <laughs> shipping and fulfillment center where all this stuff goes and they send it to Amazon on my behalf. If you're willing to put in the time to kind of find these deals and learn the game, it sounds like there's margin to be found out here. So that's that's exciting for me to hear without necessarily doing the needle in the haystack aisles of, of Walmart type of thing that I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> so what's next for you? Where do you see this thing going? Do you see this becoming a full-time thing? You know, I, I really enjoy selling on Amazon. I always thought of my as an entrepreneur. So I want to continue doing what I'm doing today, but I want to focus on automation. I do not want to get my hands dirty just because there's other areas of interest, like I want to grow my blog and whatnot. So yeah, if you could, if I could hit one million in sale by end of next year, I'm just going to take baby steps. I know people who want to jump from you know hundred thousand or fifty thousand a year to one million, but again, there's some baby steps. You you forget there's learning that has to be done to get from fifty thousand to one million, and you know you have to be able to take that kind of a risk. So my goal is to sell about a million next year on Amazon. I'm doing about 250000 a year right now. Kind of progress it, but my goal is to you know make a sourcing trip to China later this year. As I said, you know, find products like the knife that I gave you an example. If I can sell 20 units, why not find a product that I just sell 10 or 15 SKUs of those products, get them from China and sell the 200 units of those. So that's an ongoing business. That is a business. What I have today is a side gig because I'm still scouring for deals. Yes, I have automated everything. I have VAs who are finding work for me, but they're doing the deal. Absolutely. So you mentioned the blog, creditcard101.us is where you can find that. Also encourage you to check out um, its Facebook group again called Credit Card 101. I've been a member for the last several months and have learned a bunch of different stuff in there. So it's it's a definitely a fascinating community to kind of immerse yourself in. And he mentioned uh, half a dozen different FBA Facebook groups as well. We'll link those up for you in the show notes at sidehustlenation.com slash Amit. Again, A-M-I-T. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's wrap this thing up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. I have a goal to just make $500 a month next year. It's amazing what you can do with $500 a month that could just, you know, it could be a new car and it's very, very easy. And one thing I would recommend is have a Facebook presence, you know, not not for social engagement that much, but you can literally, if you're not making money on Facebook today, you are really going backwards. It might sound harsh, but Facebook is the easiest place to make money today. And $500 a month should not be a challenge. There's so many things that you could do in just your spare time and that could convert from a side gig to a real business. And it's happened to me and I hope it happens to you. Absolutely. If you're not making money on Facebook, Facebook's making money on you. That's for sure. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, thank you so much for joining me and we'll catch up with you soon. There's no question that Amit has picked up a ton of different skills from sourcing inventory to working with virtual assistants to learning how to get the absolute most out of every dollar that he puts on a credit card. And I want to point out that he wasn't born knowing how to do this stuff. And that's where today's sponsor, Skillshare.com, comes in because everything is learnable. On Skillshare, you can learn all of those skills and more and still practice just-in-time learning, which is to say, to pick up the skills you need when you need them. The online on-demand education platform has more than 20,000 classes taught by practicing experts. Join the millions of professionals and side hustlers who are leveling up their skills to advance their careers and grow their businesses. How Skillshare works is you get unlimited access to all these classes for a low monthly price. I compare it to Netflix, but unlike Netflix, I think it'll actually help your business. Check out the extensive catalog for yourself at Skillshare.com slash side hustle. While you're there, you'll notice that Skillshare has put together a special offer for Side Hustle Show listeners, where you can try Skillshare for two months for just 99 cents. I think you're going to love it. Visit Skillshare.com slash side hustle to get started today. That's Skillshare.com slash side hustle for two months of unlimited access for just 99 cents. All right, my top three takeaways from this call with Amit. I warned you, it was like drinking from a fire hose, right? So takeaway number one is to start small. Remember when Amit started with those Apple watches, his attitude was, look, worst case, I'm going to lose my thousand bucks. That's what he was comfortable investing at that time. And of course, he found that they sold right away and he scaled up the business in a hurry. But I really liked his call to set a goal of making $500 a month. Could you find 500 bucks a month, a profit on the side, the internet and retail in general is a pretty big place, but I'm confident 
that if you set your mind to it and use some of the tools and strategies that he laid out in this episode, I'm confident you can get that done. This really is one of those businesses that you can study about for years, but until you get in the game, it's hard to know the specific challenges and hurdles that you'll face. So that's takeaway number one, to start small. Like I started my retail arbitrage experiments with around $200 in inventory. I think that was the damage from my first shopping trips. A little experiment to see if the stuff would sell, to see if it was interesting and fun and if it was repeatable. So that's takeaway number one, to start small. And I'll also add to invest in tools as you grow. I meet named a ton of apps and extensions and software tools to help you with this business. And the good news is a lot of those are free. And the ones that aren't, a lot of those have free trials. So I probably wouldn't go out and commit myself to hundreds of dollars a month in additional software overhead or Facebook group overhead until I've proven to myself that a model is, this is something that I like to do. Takeaway number two is to become a part of the community. He called it the skill of being Facebook friendly, joining relevant communities of people doing this stuff, getting off the sidelines, becoming an embedded and trusted member of those groups. I've gotten immense value from certain Facebook groups related to online business and self-publishing. In fact, having been an active member, I found several clients for my old book editing business in those self-publishing groups. I thought that was a powerful reminder at the end too. If you're not making money on Facebook, you are missing out. Takeaway number three is to figure it out as you go. Again, no one is a born expert and there's a learning curve to all of this, especially with an e-commerce business. There are a lot of moving parts to this, but you don't need to be an expert at everything to get started. And that goes for online arbitrage and that goes for blogging, freelancing, you name it. You figure it out as you go. You probably noticed that Amit is still figuring it out, looking at different channels to source inventory, different ways to optimize his operation. And of course, a fully automated money machine with virtual assistants at the controls and cash and credit card rewards piling up sounds awesome. But understand, it's going to take some time to get there. One step at a time. The key is just to keep making those steps. Definitely curious to hear your feedback on this episode. SideHustleNation.com slash Amit is where you can find links to all the resources mentioned and download that free PDF highlight reel with all of his top tips from the call. SideHustleNation.com slash A-M-I-T. And if you're curious about the world of credit card rewards, I encourage you to check out my free course on the topic, FreeCreditCardCourse.com. That's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show, where you'll meet a guy whose side hustle was inspired by a classified ad in Djibouti, Africa, and a skill he learned on YouTube. I'll see you then. Hustle on. Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 